everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Well, kind of at least. Uh, today is going to be a bit different of a video, but we're going to eventually tie it all back into the Wheel of Time. Now, I want to take a step back from talking about the specifics of the Wheel of Time series and the books and all the adaptation stuff, and I want to talk about the entertainment industry as a whole, some of the massive changes that have just come about, and what that might mean for the Wheel of Time production. There are truly some massive changes coming to the way that we consume content and to what types of content are produced. And I think that these are actually going to affect not only the production for the Wheel of Time, but also its success. So let me first give a big thank you to the video sponsor, Bespoke Post, one of the newest sponsors on the channel, and I'm super excited about this one personally, as I am a customer. Bespoke Post is a great box service for some really cool stuff, but we'll talk about them a little bit later. And before getting into the meat of the video, let's pause and hit a spoiler warning. This video is going to carry a spoiler rating of green, meaning there will not be any spoilers of any kind for the series. Feel free to watch whether you have read the Wheel of Time books or not. So I guess with all of this, the best place to start here is to just talk generally about what's been going on. Over the course of the last year, things in the entertainment industry have drastically changed with some of the even more drastic changes coming only just recently. While most of these changes can be directly tied to the worldwide pandemic, the lasting impact of some of this is going to be felt, I think, forever, and the industry may be permanently changed. So what are these changes? Well, let's take a step back and look at what has happened in 2020. Now, as the year started, it was basically business as usual, with movies coming out each weekend, new streaming content becoming available on the various streaming services. In fact, there were even various streaming services getting ready to launch, like HBO Max, which we will talk more about here in a minute. Then, COVID happened. Movie theaters were shut down for months, and most of them have not reopened. Those that are open are barely open at a fraction of their capacity, and due to this shutdown, major movie releases were also delayed, many until late in next year. Movies were not the only things hurt by COVID, though. Major television productions were shut down for safety, including the Wheel of Time production, which is obviously very dear to all of us. And now because of all of these production shutdowns, there was also a small content drought because there were fewer and fewer things being produced. Duh. So one of the results of this is that major productions that were originally intended for a theatrical release started coming out on streaming services. Now, this was primarily due to two things. One, with so many people at home and the number of streaming services growing, companies needed a competitive edge. And so moving some of their movies to exclusive streaming platforms is an easy way to draw an audience to that specific platform. One other reason for this is that many of these studios spent a lot of money to make these movies and holding on to them for a year or more doesn't make much sense in the short term financially, and if they are strapped, they need to get it out. So, movies like the live-action version of Mulan came to Disney+, Plus, Borat to Amazon, Witches to HBO Max, and Wonder Woman 1984 is coming to HBO Max on Christmas Day, among many other films that that happened with this year. But the major event happened just about two weeks ago now. Warner Brothers, one of the largest movie production companies in the world, and the company behind all of the DC films, including Wonder Woman 1984, announced that their entire 2021 movie slate, including major blockbusters like Dune, Godzilla vs. Kong, Mortal Kombat, Space Jam, The Suicide Squad, and The Matrix 4, among a couple others, will all be having simultaneous releases in the theaters, as well as being available on HBO Max without extra charge. So basically... On the same day that it comes out in the movie theater, you could sit in your living room and watch the movie on HBO Max. I can't state what a profound change this is, and although Warner Brothers says that it's only for the next year, the industry has been drifting this way for a long time now. Streaming services, as is obvious by the number of major studios trying to have their own now, are seen as the future of the entertainment industry. Cable television has been in a long decline as the growth of streaming has made paying for cable less and less important. And movie theaters have long been pushing to make the movie theater experience better to get people to come see movies in the theater. If you remember, if you think 20 years back, movie theaters were cramped little places with as many seats as possible in them. And now they have many fewer seats, but they're much more comfortable. They have recliners, all of that. This has been a part of a push to add value to the movie going experience to offset the fewer number of people that are going they can charge more for a ticket now because it's more of an experience. Now, I want to be clear. I am a major movie fan. I'm someone who, before the pandemic, 
went to see at least one movie a week in the theater. I absolutely love movie theaters, and I want to see most of these movies from Warner Brothers in the theater rather than just watching them on HBO Max. But that doesn't change that that's not what most people are like. I can't help but feeling like this change from Warner Brothers, even though they say it's just for the next year, will probably end up being more of a permanent change. So I want to address that possibility and what that might mean. If the trend of having major theatrical releases coming to streaming services at the same time continues, there are going to be two questions that we really need to address here. Number one, what is going to happen to the movie theater business and movies in general? And then number two, most important to the theme on this YouTube channel, is what effect is this going to have on the TV shows, and specifically, the Wheel of Time? Well, let's first ask the simple question. Is this the end of the movie theater business? The short answer is no, probably not. Again, assuming they don't go back to normal after COVID's gone, there is still a lot of life in the movie industry. Uh, it just may look a little different. So a lot of this is going to depend on how the movie studios change their royalty deals with the theater companies. So if you aren't aware, the majority of the ticket price that you pay when you go pay a movie theater to see a movie goes right back to the movie studio. The money that the theater makes is primarily from concessions, which is why you pay $8 for popcorn. Much smarter people than me are suggesting that given that the entire amount of the revenue from a movie will no longer come from simply the movie theater, the movie production companies are probably going to reduce the royalty per ticket they force theaters to pay. What this means is, is that theaters can remain just as profitable even if fewer people are coming into the theaters. There will likely be people like me that want to go to the movie theater for the experience. Sound quality, the visual quality. It's also, to me, just a great way to get out and go do something fun, and movie theaters nowadays are more of an experience. So I expect them to double down on comfort and on that overall experience. There are always going to be people that want that. I'm one of them. What I do expect to change, though, is the types of movies that you will see in theaters. I would expect to see fewer movies actually released in theaters, as it's much cheaper to advertise and release an indie film on a streaming service rather than in a major theater. And you're already seeing that happen to a degree. Amazon did that with Beautiful Boy with Timothy Chalamet and Steve Carell. Again, some of this is going to depend on the way that people end up consuming content. There is both potential for higher profits with a streaming service if they can draw large audiences that otherwise would not have gone to a theater, but there's also potential for much lower draw if people just don't find the movie among all of the other things to watch on the streaming service. This could also affect budgets for major movies. Maybe they aren't going to risk spending $200 million on a production if they aren't sure that they can make the same amount of money as they have before. Maybe they'll be more willing to because of the influx they're going to get on streaming services. That remains to be seen. But the second question that I want to address here is one that I think we have more of a definitive answer to. What do these changes mean for streaming service shows? I think the answer here is definitively positive. There can really be no effect other than a larger audience for these streaming services if major motion pictures are drawing people into that service. So for instance, if a major show is showing on Amazon, a major movie is showing on Amazon, more people are going to tune into Amazon and look at the rest of the stuff in their catalog. If more people are there to watch the show, naturally the shows are going to get more viewers. Look no further than what Disney has done with its recent announcements. Just this past week, they unveiled a plan to bring multiple Marvel and Star Wars television shows to life on Disney+. Plus. Now, these are all a part of their cinematic universes, so these aren't just separate shows. They're bringing in actual characters from the MCU, actual Star Wars characters, and they're investing a ton of money into this original content. Apparently, they see the path to profitability as not with just movie theaters only, but with a heavy investment into new content for their streaming services. Now, what's this have to do with the Wheel of Time? If major releases start showing up on Amazon, obviously more people are likely to look at content on the platform, as we just said. So let's talk some numbers here for a minute. As I was doing research for this video, I actually was really astounded by some of these numbers. Right now, in the U.S. alone, over 82% of households have an Amazon Prime membership which means they have access to Amazon Prime Video content. That's more than 126 million members in the U.S. alone. I would argue that many of those people don't even pay attention to Amazon Prime Video content, but knowing that a major movie is there might make them want to tune into that type of content, and that really can't be a bad thing for Wheel of Time. Amazon shows are going to get larger audiences due to these changes, assuming Amazon puts movies on their platform, which, by the way, they are doing. Take a look at it. 
So what this means is, is at the end of the day, what we've been saying all along, if the show is good, it's going to get an enormous audience, potentially many times larger than the audience for Game of Thrones. That's pretty exciting. Some of these changes may be bad for movie theaters, but I do think they're definitively positive for shows like The Wheel of Time. So I'm very curious what you all think of this. Have you been watching more streaming content during COVID? Are you likely to go to a theater if you have the choice to watch a movie at home or see it at a theater? Which are you more likely to do? And do you think this is a positive or a negative thing for the Wheel of Time TV show? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I also want to take a minute here and tell you a little bit about the video's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Now, what is Bespoke Post, you might ask? Well, it's really simple. Bespoke Post is a subscription box service that has more than 100,000 members. They specialize in creating really cool gift boxes that you're going to receive on a monthly basis, has all kinds of cool goodies in it. Now, these aren't like cheap trinkets. These are really high-end items that they coordinate and put together, and they can get them at a really cheap cost because they buy them in bulk and ship them out to all their members. Some of the past boxes include Parlor, which is a liquor tray and glass set, Puro, which is a set of premium cigars with all the necessary stuff to smoke them. Soothe, which is a self-care focused box that it focuses on relaxing and creating a home spa type environment. It's pretty darn cool. I'm a member and actually here in the next few days, I'm going to be getting the Frontier box, which has a bottle opener, a high-end pocket knife, and a really darn cool ballpoint pen and notebook. Now, I love ballpoint pens. I mentioned this in my last video. That's actually the reason I wanted this box. So I'm pretty pumped about that. All of these things make great gifts. They also have small stocking stuffers that you can buy. And the great thing about Bespoke Post is that they are supporting small businesses with all of their purchases. So click the link in the description below to get signed up for the service. Guys, you really help the channel out by doing that. It's an awesome service. I can vouch for it. Definitely click that link and check it out. Make sure to also like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. I know this video was not super focused on the Wheel of Time, but Wheel of Time content is pretty much what I do here on this channel. Make sure to check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's really the best way to support what we do here, and it's our most consistent form of revenue. Your support is what keeps thegreatblight.com running and fuels the growth uh, with all the stuff that we have planned for the website with the release of the show. Thanks to everybody who supports the channel and the website. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?